Well, hello. Happy 2023, everybody. Welcome to Lucky Stones. I'm Chris, and today we've got a very exciting hunt. We are in the middle of Wales. We are in a very foggy place. <laughs> We're in Gilwern, uh, which is sort of mid Wales, uh, right in the middle of nowhere. And uh, we've got access to a fantastic quarry of Ordovician rocks, which are somewhere between 465 and 469 million years old. Uh, so way, way older than the rocks I'm used to hunting in. Uh, today we're going to be hunting for graptolites, or we're hunting for trilobites, uh, possibly some brachiopods if we're lucky, although they're very, very small at this place. And uh, we're going to be splitting rocks. Uh, no tide to worry about. It's going to be fantastic. It's just me and Aidan here. We had a guided tour with UCAF a few days ago, thanks to Barry and John. And uh, we'll see how we get on. I'll set the camera up, we'll split some rocks and see what we can find. Well, this is an absolutely stunning part of the world. You'll have to take my word for it because we can't see more than 10 meters in front of us. But over there in that gray section, over there in the distance, is Snowden. But you can't see it today. When we arrived a couple of days ago, this place was covered in snow and we had a wonderful view. Uh, so um, I can't give you that view today. So we'll insert a couple of pictures of the day we arrived when we had the snow. So I can show you how pretty it all is. It's well worth a visit. Well, we'll have a look at this. Not really a spot to find. There it is right there in the center. And it's a whole one. Uh, this is a guy called uh, Ogynus. Um, they're colloquially known as Oggies. So that's what I'll probably call them for the rest of the video. Um, but we've got all of it. So what we've got up here is the, the Kefalon and we've got an eye. Uh, oh blimey, sorry about this. Uh, we've got an eye there and another eye there. And then we've got the thorax in the middle and the pygidium at the end. And this is in a block that we might be able to, to get out. Um, oh, and there's another little baby one, another little baby malt right next to it. Right, so I'll, uh, I'll take a photo and then we'll try and get this all out in one piece. Well, I've just spent 20 minutes digging out that last trilobite and uh, it came out on a large block and um, it didn't look brilliant. So uh, I will take it with us and I'll get a photo of it back at the uh, back at the hut. But uh, it didn't split as well as I'd hoped. That rock over there that Aidan's just trying, that's where I was. And it, it doesn't split um, at all along lines. It's, it's very conchoidal. I think most of that might have been volcanic ash. As well. I just thought he's giving up on this. I'm going to have a go. Go for it. <laughs> but in the meantime, look what I've got here. Uh, I haven't even turned it over, but it's an almost complete oggy. And uh, I think that's the actual animal. Looks like it's preserved on a bit of ironstone, which is kind of nice. Even though it might be a malt, but it's, uh, it's still virtually complete. And then right next to it is uh, a little bit of a slightly bigger one. But no, that can stay in the quarry. Haven't had any joy in uh, in terms of the fresh stuff I've been uh, cracking over there. So I've wandered over here, haven't turned over a single rock yet, and we've got quite a few bits and pieces. We have the pygidium there of one, with a little bit of thorax. And then over here, we've got another one. Looks like they're both oggies, which is the most common one found here. Although there are several species found, um, predictably some are rarer than others. Uh, we've got another imprint of a pygidium there, 
Uh, just a tiny fraction of uh, fragment of one here. And an another tiny fragment here. So as you can see, uh, trilobite uh, bits are incredibly common. Now in terms of these rocks, um, I know several of the sites I go to are sites of uh, special scientific interest. Uh, which means you're not allowed to do hammering in the bedrock. Uh, well this one's a bit different. Uh, these rocks have been quarried for about 50 years uh, for roads for the farm. And, uh, and whilst it is interesting scientifically, it's not a protected site. There's two ways you can come and visit here. Uh, because it is on private land, you can't just rock up. But you can ask the, uh, you can find the landowners and they've got a wonderful little hut that you can come and stay in, because that's where we're staying. And the other one is to come on an organized fossil hunt. And that's what I did on Sunday with uh, Barry and Mark, and that's with UCAF. Uh, that's the uh, United Kingdom Association of Fossil Hunters. Uh, I'm one of the volunteer le leaders as well. Uh, I'm based down in the south of England, so that's where my area is. But we've got leaders all over the country. And this is, uh, this is Barry's area. So thanks again, Barry. And uh, thanks to the landowner. And I'll put details if you do want to come and stay. Uh, and details about UCAF as well for next time we're up here. Anyway, back on with rock splitting. And looks like we've got a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle here. <laughs> it's only the imprint of one, so it won't be coming home. But you see that little dot and those little lines? Well, that is the, um, the negative imprint of uh, the eye of an oggy. And that's its head and that's its nose. And then this is its body. And that rock used to be together. And I've just found it split apart. So I thought that was quite cool. So we've got another another imprint here. Got the rounded edge of a pygidium and a bit of thorax. Then on this one we've got a bit of thorax right there. And we've got a pygidium here. And uh, a fresh pygidium straight out of the hole. Very nice. Yeah, there's bits and pieces everywhere. I've just hit a rock and something exciting's popped out. So let's have a look together. I've put the rock back together. Uh, unfortunately, it's broken in three pieces, but you can see that white chisel mark. That's where I hit, hoping that it would split and this bit came off. And as you can see, we've got some trilobite there. That's very, very nice. And then this bit unfortunately broke off. And there's some more of it underneath there. Uh, let's see, can you see that? So yeah, this is part of the same animal here. Um, I'm not sure whether this is brave or foolish. But what I'm going to do is try and tap very gently along this line and see if I can reveal the head of this guy. So I'm not going to try and do it one-handed, so I'll get back to you in a tick. Well, the fossil gods have said no on this occasion. I was as careful as I could be, and um, we got a little bit off the top here, but then unfortunately, this guy has come off here. And so the head bit will be under there, the kephalon, and it would have been a reasonably nice one, sort of got the contrast in colours, but uh, there's no way of prepping it, and um, well, you've seen the jigsaw, uh, I'm not taking that home, uh, I've got jigsaws like that already, um, so <laughs> we'll move on to the next one.
We've got Aiden still chipping away over there for trailer bites. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head down to this end of the quarry where the rocks are a little bit younger and I'm going to go hunting for grapsolites. Same idea, we're going to be splitting rocks uh, but uh, as the rocks are dipping down this way on each layer on top is younger so we're going to be going about four million years back and uh, this is where the, uh, the graptolites are more commonly found. I mean, they can be found all the way through, but experience has taught us that this end of the quarry is best for graptolites. And that experience comes directly from the guys at UCAF who did the hunt on Sunday. <laughs> Thanks again, Barry and Mark. Right, wish me luck. Well, it got a uh, public information notice. Went out fossil hunting in a quarry, and while well, you're filming, don't put your hammer down, walk off with your camera and leave the hammer where you were. <sighs> right, I'm back, got my hammer. Let's get started. Success. I think I've been here, well, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes and I found my first Graptolite. Yay! So I split this rock open and you see that little white double um like a like a pin thing well that's a graptolite called didymograptus and that is um uh, one of the beds here is named the didymograptus beds uh because they're the most common graptolite found here uh that doesn't mean that you find them everywhere so i'm absolutely oh, buzzed that's only the second one i found here <laughs> yay well, i'm not sure if you can see but we've got the um the negative impression of it here as well so we've got uh, that's the one side of it and that's the other side of it so they will definitely be coming back with me oh, I'm pleased with that well I've just had to take half an hour off from hitting rocks because um, I managed to bash one of those rocks and smash some rocks into my eye so um, kids wear safety glasses it's not just health and safety nonsense. Anyway, I can just about see out of my right eye now. Still a bit painful. And the first rock I've hit, um, I'm going to take you in for a little look. Um, that's where I hit it. And as it turns over, we have a beautiful malt of a thorax and pygidium and the negative impression of it as well and uh, the uh, the orange staining is is um is iron ironstone uh, or iron mineralization uh, it looks quite beautiful quite pleased with that Well, I'm back at the hut now, and uh, I just set all the fossils out on the table that I found over the past couple of days, and then we had a bit of Welsh weather, so uh, um, they're all a little bit wet now, so hopefully that will make them easier to see. So it gave me a chance to go and make myself a cup of tea. And, um, well, I'll show you around what we found. So the first one we've got is just um, a little negative mould of an Ogygynus. About a centimetre, uh, but it's all there, so I quite like that. Thought that was pretty. Um, the next one we've got um, this was one of the first ones I found when I got to the quarry on Sunday. Um, these were a couple of trilobites, um, I think they're trinucleus, uh, but they're preserved in calcite, so they've got a white colour as opposed to um, just an imprint, um, all like the ironstone one we saw earlier. Incidentally, the ironstone one uh, didn't come off the quarry with us. 
Um, unfortunately, it fell out of my bag, so at least I got a photo of it. <laughs> Speaking of coloured uh, trilobites, I uh, found this really rather beautiful uh, pygidium. Uh, let's see if I can show you here. It's a uh, positive and negative, and it's preserved in purple. And if we have a look on the negative here, I'll try and get a close-up photo, but the preservation is so absolutely exquisite that you can actually see little lines down the side of the pygidium, which uh, is, is very unusual to see that level of detail. Uh, so I, that's why I picked this one up, um, even though it's not complete. But that's another Oggy Gynus. Um, that's, the, as I said, the most common one we, we get here. Um, this is the one that we were bashing out quite early on. Uh, it's not spectacular. Uh, uh, it's pretty sure it's a trinucleus. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to become part of the wall uh, as opposed to part of the collection. Uh, this is the other big one that we found uh, just weathering out of the top of the rock. Um, another Oggy Gynus. Quite a nice size one. Again, just um, probably not worth bringing back. Okay, uh, this this one here, uh, this one didn't get wet because uh, this one was inside. Um, but this is a lovely malt. Um, we've got two on it. We've got a whole Ogygynus on bottom, uh, just there at the bottom there, both sides. And on top is another malt of a slightly bigger trilobite, uh, also Ogygynus. And that's its pygidium on top of the other guy's head. Um, and I thought it was rather lovely that we go together and just split apart and thought that was very pretty. Now this next one is a different species. Um, this one's called Flexicalamine. And we've got a positive and negative. I'll try and get the positive here. Um, it's a longer, thinner body than Ogygynus but they are quite closely related, they're cousins. And also on the same block we've got um, uh, Pygidium and yeah, there's the, the negative there of the Flexcalamine and the Pygidium. So I think the last thing uh, that we need to show you is the, uh, the Graptolites. Oh no, there's one more thing after the Graptolites. See, the thing is with Graptolites, they're often not much more than a stain in the rock. But there we go. If you look at them under a microscope, they've got some lovely detail. Um, but I don't know if you can make that out. I'll try and add a photo of it. Um, and the, the other side of it. And just at this end. So we've got the both impressions of it. And the last thing is the little tufa. So we've got one, two on that side and the other sides of them, one, two. So that's been my trip to, uh, to Gilwell and Quarry. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. I couldn't recommend it enough. Um, I'll post details about where you can, um, uh, who you can get in touch with if you want to come and hunt here or come and stay here. And um, well, I'll sign off for now. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have, uh, do leave a thumbs up and, uh, and a subscribe if you want. And uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.